it's me. Welcome to episode four of the Weekly Whisper. I'm your host, Elian Habenauer. We're here to talk all things 365 Pro Wrestling. And I just have to start it off by this. 365, 365, 365. That was how the weekend started. That was how the weekend ended. And this may be the best episode of the Whisper. What action. And the BC shows were great, but I was not there. These ones I was there for, so I got to experience... Um, the 365 brand live and in person, so that was pretty special for me. Friday, we had Kitchener in the very new venue, the Registry Theater. Now this is, it's just, un, uh, it's the perfect thing for wrestling. It's a perfect place, per perfect environment, excuse me, wow. Um, it's a theater, they have the theater lights, the stage is the ring. They're surrounded by chairs, and then they have bleachers going up, and what a way to start off. And like I said, the fans are ready for this. They wanted it. They were so excited, as were all the people that were on the show, all the interviewers and uh, announcers and referees and re uh, wrestlers. Everybody was, it was just a, such a great feeling in the air, of, of such a breath of fresh air, and uh, Kitchener really tore it down. What, what a night, like really... It's really hard to put it into words unless you were there. So make sure next time it happens that you are there. So we had um, the very first match ever in 365 Pro Wrestling Ontario. Pretty Ricky came out and he uh, he took on Clay Wilson and it was quite a battle. Now, um, there's going to be tons of content over the next couple weeks. The, these kind of shows like the Weekly Whisper are going to get lost in the shuffle because um, there's so much stuff to come out. There is... Um, there going to be matches that come out. So much great new content filmed for the podcast and, and whatnot. And um, I interviewed a bunch of guys backstage at the Kitchener show. Um, just trying to get my feel for this uh, being the interviewer guy. Um, and I really had a great time. And uh, I wasn't able to do that much in Guelph because it's just a different location. And it's, it's, there's not as many spots to find to do it. But um, I really had a great time. And what an opening contest. Pretty Ricky Clay Wilson. Both went at it, but Pretty Ricky was able to pick up the win and uh, start the show off on the right foot, and everybody was happy. Things were going well. We had The lighting was incredible. The smoke machines, the, the ring entrance music played by the DJ. It just was really cool. Um, and then the second match, we had Sebastian Suave take on Nolan Pink, and Suave was able to pick up the win here, but still, I feel like both were winners. Nolan Pink really uh, showed what he's capable of, of, showed what he's capable of, and um, really just put on an impressive display, suave, able to get the win, and uh, he really kind of put the people in 365 on notice. A lot of people know who he is. For those who didn't, he made sure they they were going to remember his name. It was, it was a great night. Uh, the next match, we had Joey Allen take on uh, BMD, and um, Joey Allen won with the headbutt. His, it's a new move that he's been using. I remember... Uh, a few months ago, he headbutted me in a match. Um, I was able to uh, not get pinned from it, but it it roughed me up for a couple of days after. And now he's really uh, honed his skill of this headbutt, and this headbutt is really becoming a deadly weapon. And uh, it might just be what Joey Allen needed to push him to the next level. It definitely helped him here, uh, picking up the victory over BMD. Then we had a wrestling contest unlike on any other wrestling contest. We had Tyson Dukes take on Eric Kearney for the pure wrestling fans in the, in the crowd and anybody that just loves technical wrestling at its finest. What a, a compete level these two guys brought out. Tyson Dukes won over Eric Kearney, um, but both men showed tremendous respect for each other after the match. They both seemed to love those kind of wrestling contests and competing at that skill level. And uh, the fans were the real winners, obviously. It, what, what a matchup. It was just so good. You had a little bit of everything on this. It was a, such a good variety show. You have Pretty Ricky, who's a real fun character, and putting him against such a, um, a vocal person like Clay Wilson, who really likes to jaw jack with the crowd. It was so fun. And then you got Suave, who really... Um, his character, he's the endorsement, and, and Nolan Pink, who's such a great uh, high flyer. Just a little something for everybody. And the next match was the only tag match of the night. We had Lenny and CC Moss who were supposed to be taking on Nova and a surprise partner. Nova couldn't make it. So a new team was made of Super K and John John Tavius. 
who were very impressive as a team for people that had never teamed before. They, they seemed to have some chemistry, and if it wasn't for the Temple's uh, wicked ways, they perhaps would have won, but I feel uh, I see great things in the future if these guys were to continue teaming. And uh, John John is someone that um, hasn't really been out in Kitchener very much, and uh, the fans seem to love him. The universe number one, they took to him. He's someone to really watch out for in the future, especially uh, if he's with the tag team with Super K, but singles as well, which I'll get into later. And then we had uh, the main event of the main show. Uh, Judah, Judas Icarus took on Brody King, and uh, this one was a classic big man versus little man battle, but Judas Icarus did not look like a lesser at all. In fact, of course, he won the match, but he he's no one to slouch on. It doesn't matter size of height, like kind of like Marcus Stroman, height doesn't measure heart. He uh, he really took it to Brody King. This match is already on YouTube. It's got a lot of praise and a lot of uh, a lot of views. And uh, make sure to check it out if you haven't. It was a great first ever main event for 365 Wrestling and Kitchener. And then they started off a new deal called the Underground VIP, just doing a little something different that uh, anybody else is doing in the in the area. And uh, we had a 10,000 thumbtack match. Jeff Black defeated Brandon Jacobs. My respect for both of these men. I had to interview both of these men immediately after the match, and I felt bad having to interview them so they could not get immediate medical attention. You've seen a little bit of everything. Yes, it was a thumbtack match, but there was like a big slam through a big crazy barbed wire board. They found extra ring ropes under the ring and roughed each other up from that. Both men could barely walk after. Even Tex was really... Uh, feeling it too, and uh, man, it just, Brandon Jacobs, I knew he was tough, um, Jeff Black, he's done these kind of matches before, so it was no surprise to me there, but Brandon Jacobs really came out, this is his breakout party, I think, I'm pretty sure I've never seen this side of Brandon Jacobs, and this could be a thing for him, he proved he's such a tough son of a gun, and um, it, was, it was a great match, and then in the final one, we had uh, Warhead versus Eddie Osborne, this match was supposed to be a Flaming Tables match, the temple was able to get in the ear of the, the owners of the building, or I, I believe that's what it was. I, I wasn't able to catch what happened, but I heard a little bit of second-hand information. They were able to get the match stopped and not have a Flaming Tables match, but Eddie Osborne and Warhead still bring out the best in each other. They had a crazy match. There was fireballs thrown, uh, light, glass light tubes shattered everywhere. Both men were picking glass out of their bodies after... It was pretty disgusting. Uh, then there was an announcement made after the show, uh, talking about, like, this is what 365 is going to be, and the crowd loved it. it. They were chanting 365. They didn't want to leave. They did not want to leave, and it was such an impressive debut for 365 out here in Ontario. And then uh, we got to get into Guelph. Uh, Guelph is just completely different. Like, uh, there's been shows run there at the Red Chevron Club before, but it's just turning into one of the better atmospheres in, in professional wrestling. It's somewhere you go, the crowd just wants to be there. They want to be super loud. They want to have a good time. They want to stick up for their people that are their favorites and not their favorites. And it's really strange, too, um, where you go to other towns and the people that are really fan favorites. In Guelph, not so much. And then people, um, wrestlers that are usually sometimes get booed in other towns, get love, or not not always that, but it's like 50-50. It's like the fans don't just say, oh, you're cheering for this guy, so I'm going to too. The fan, a lot of matches were 50-50. Some people love this guy, and some people love this guy or girl, and it's just so cool. You, you Just being there, you get goosebumps. Like, I was just backstage, and I, I just had goosebumps, and, like, the, the building was shaking, and you could not fit... Any more people in there. It's impossible. There was no way there was room for any more people. Like, they normally have, like, a little aisle way. They, they had to get extra chairs. It was it was crazy. And the first match really set it, set it off right. So we had Eric Carney, uh, Kearney versus John John Tavius. The first look for uh, Guelph at John John. Some people really liked him. Some people uh, just really loved Eric more, or there's a familiarity thing. But Eric has become a real favorite in Guelph. But this match was awesome. Um, so many great moves and counters, and it really let people know they were here to see an incredible show. They, the crowd was, like, so loud for this. It was, it was crazy. 
And then, um, <coughs> of course, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I apologize, very unprofessional. Uh, so we had, um, the next match we had Brody King take on Eddie Osborne in just a battle of two big guys going out. Like, what a slugfest. And then Brody King picked up Eddie Osborne, I've never seen this before, and pile-drived him like he was, like he weighed 100 pounds or something. He just picked him up with ease and planted him and picked up the victory for himself. I was pretty happy. I got to do a podcast with Brody King, so check that out when it drops. Uh, what a great performer he is, and what a gentleman, and um, he was just such a great person to have on the shows the whole weekend. The crowd was happy to see him, and uh, he was happy to be there. And the next match might have been the most important match as far as there was no championships on the line all weekend, but in this match, it was this, the hot seat match. If you watched episode uh, three of The Whisper, I, I broke it down into great detail. Whoever lost this match was no longer going to be in Guelph um, for a while there. So it was Joey Allen taking on Super K. Um, and Joey Allen used that headbutt again. So um, Super K um, is super out, as some of the crowd was saying. And uh, it's going to take a while for him to get his way back into Guelph. This was a great match as well. All the matches, like the crowd was just feeling it all night. And uh, just just really great to see. So then we had uh, CC Moss, uh, who came out with, uh, Tex Lexus came out with her. He was involved in three matches. I got to do a promo with him earlier in the evening, and uh, that guy could talk his ass off. So we got CC Moss, and she took on the debuting Holodead. Fans of Guelph had never seen something quite like her before, and uh, she was very impressive. If it wasn't for Tex and his shenanigans, I believe she probably could have got the win, but CC Moss ended up having her hand raised at the end of the night. Just something unreal. Just a, a real good women's match there. Women's contest. Both great competitors. Super they're superstars in, in their own right. And then uh, we had... Uh, I was talking about Brandon Jacobs earlier. Not only did he have a very good showing against Jeff Black in the, uh, the Thumbtacks match, he wrestled in a three-way match with Warhead and Jeff Black um, here in Guelph in a three-way contest, which also saw some... Um, there's no rules in a three-way match, so we see you know, a lot of violence and hardcore and uh, some weapons and whatnot. And Brandon Jacobs, I don't know if he shocked everybody because he is such a great competitor, but uh, he got the win here and surprised a few folks. And uh, he seems to really uh, be stepping up his game since 365 Wrestle. He had brand new gear, he looked great, and uh, he had a great... And he pinned both Warhead and Jeff Black, which is pretty impressive, if I must say, who... They're both such great competitors, and that was a pretty crazy match in itself. Uh, then we went to the intermission, and then, oh, and obviously Tex was out with Jeff Black there as well, and then we went to intermission, and then uh, Lenny Lilac came out uh, playing the, the song that the crowd loves to chant. It's the effing temple. Um, hopefully there'll be shirts coming soon with that. This match was just loads of fun. The crowd, I, I've never heard them so loud before. Clay Wilson and Lenny did battle in what was just such an epic contest. You're not going to see this type of entertainment anywhere else. It was it was just so great. Um, everybody just couldn't stop smiling after and high-fiving each other. Everybody, the fans, the ring production crew, myself, I was just happy to be there. And then, of course, the match everybody's talking about. Judas Icarus took on Josh Alexander. This was like a 22-minute match, I believe. And wow... Like, I always, like I'm, I'm familiar with Josh, I'm familiar with Judas, but i just seen Judas stick, take it to another level here, and he was able to beat Josh Alexander, which is no easy feat, and he got respect from everybody after. Josh was tweeting, Brody was tweeting, everybody was tweeting that this kid is, he's something special, he's going to make it. He's, wherever, whatever he wants to do, he can do it, he proved that. And uh, for that, also, like, we're, we're starting to get some results and rankings coming in. So Judas not only beat Brody King and Josh Alexander, so now he's 2-0 in 365, as well as uh, Joey Allen, who won both of his contests. Um, so also, oh, West, we have Nolan, who's 2-0 and in singles contests, and Brett Matthews as well. So we're starting to see a couple people uh, kind of emerge ahead of the rest of the pack. Now, I know things can change any show, but it was a great first weekend for uh, Jody, Joey Allen and Judas Icarus, who I have to say were the MVPs of the weekend, which is something I guess I'm going to start doing since I did it last time. 
it was just it was just a great weekend. So happy to be there. I'm excited for everybody who was not able to be there to see the content as it starts coming out here um, in the next coming days and weeks and whatnot because there was just so much good about this and uh, I can't say enough good things about it and uh, I want to know from you guys, please, if you were at Kitchener or you were at Guelph, drop a comment in the uh, comment section obviously and uh, let me know what you thought, what matches you liked, what you didn't like, what you thought of the new venue in Kitchener, what about the atmosphere in Guelph. And I will name drop you on the show, and I'll and I'll quote you. I'll read what you said on the show, and uh, let other people know. And so please do that, because as always, you know, like or you get a leg drop, comment or you get a clothesline, subscribe or you get a suplex. I'm your host, Elian Habanero. I love wrestling. This has been episode four of the Weekly Whisper, Cuba.